Today, you're going to improve your fluency in English by reading and listening to English at the same time. We're going to read a news article together, and this is the best method that you can use to become fluent fast. Welcome back to J4S English. I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline Biden makes history by joining striking auto workers on the picket line. These are the striking workers. So striking workers, those are workers who are on strike, to be on strike. To be on strike, this is when workers refuse to work. And this is because there's an argument with the employer and it's about working conditions, pay levels, or job losses. So they refuse to work and they do that officially by saying, we're going on strike. So they already went on strike. So now we can say they are on strike, to be on strike. So that's the striking auto workers, the workers who are refusing to work because of conditions. Now, the picket line. Notice for pronunciation, it's picket. Pick it and then say it combined. Pick it, picket, picket, picket line. The picket line, that just represents the group of protesting workers. And how do they protest? Well, you can see it visibly. They'll have signs. They'll be shouting, don't work, pay us more money, or whatever the issue is. Support our cause. They'll, that's what they'll do. So they're protesting. And specific to workers who are striking, we refer to that as a picket line. And as you can see, this is President Joe Biden, and he is with the workers. So we can say he has joined the picket line. Now, don't worry about writing all these notes down because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can look in the description for the link to download that. Let's continue. President Joe Biden made history today when he visited a picket line. Now we know what this is, a picket line in Michigan in a show of loyalty to auto workers who are striking for higher wages and cost of living increases. So now we know why the workers are on strike. They're on strike because they want higher wages. So wages is, of course, the money that they are paid. They want to be paid more money. They want higher wages and they want cost of living increases. This is where your salary is increased by, let's say, 2% to compensate for the fact that every year food becomes more expensive, gas becomes more expensive, all of your daily costs become more expensive. So you're not actually making more money for this cost of living increase because all of your expenses are higher. So if you receive a specific percentage increase, one, two, three percent. It's so your salary remains the same given the cost of living increases. I wrote these notes for you. Now let's continue. Biden is looking to polish his pro-labor persona. First, let's take a look at polish. The verb to polish is when you take something usually silver and you rub it and then it goes from dull to very shiny and sparkly. So dirty to clean. That's when you polish. So you can polish rings. In the past, people polished their silver and their dishes. Now we don't commonly use silverware or that style of dishes. So the expression is to polish one image. So the same thing, you take your image of yourself and you make it seem better. You improve it. You make it more attractive. Just like I can polish this ring and it will go from dull to very shiny and attractive. So you can do that with a person as well. And that's normally done with public figures, an actor, a company executive, or a politician. Of course, they need to polish their image, become more attractive. Now here, they didn't use the word image. They used the word persona. Persona, this is 
someone's image, but in a particular situation. For example, you might have a persona at work that's very different from your persona with your family. And that could be different from your persona with your friends. Maybe at work, you're very serious, but with your friends, you're very casual and you like telling a lot of jokes, but at work, you act very differently. So it's how you behave, how you act in specific situations. That's one's persona. And I'm sure you can imagine that politicians specifically have very specific ways they act in situations and that would be their persona so that's why they used polish his pro labor persona so this is his image of himself as someone who supports labor issues like the striking auto workers Biden is looking to polish his pro-labor persona as he becomes the first sitting president to appear on a picket line Okay, and this is why previously it said he made history and he made history because he's the first sitting president to appear on a picket line. Now, what is a sitting president? Well, a sitting president is a president who is currently in power because past presidents, they still maintain the title of president. We still call Donald Trump President Donald Trump, but he's not the current president. So to avoid confusion, he's the first sitting president. So the president that is currently acting as president. So that's the sitting president. And that's how he made history. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. The United Auto Workers strike against the big three auto companies. So the United Auto Workers, that would be the union that represents all of these workers. So it's their strike against the big three auto companies. So in North America, the big three auto companies are General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler maker Stellantis. So I guess the parent company of Chrysler is Stellantis. I've actually never heard of Stellantis before. Of course, I know Chrysler, but I did not know the name Stellantis. Has entered its 11th day. So they've been on strike for 11 days. Now, before we move on, I'll point out that here, the United Auto Workers strike, here strike is a noun. So strike can be used as a noun, our strike, their strike, the strike, and it can be used as a verb. Now, let's go see how it can be used as a verb because there are two common ways to be on strike, which we talked about, and to go on strike, which I briefly mentioned. But here's an example. The workers have been on strike for 11 days. Now, this is in the present perfect because it started in the past and it continues until now. So the verb is be have been on strike, to be on strike. Now we use to go on strike to talk about the transition from not on strike, so working for the company, to on strike, so not working any longer. So the workers went on strike 11 days ago. That's when the strike began. The workers went on strike because went is the past simple of the verb go. So two common ways, and remember, it can also be used as a noun. Let's continue. 
In traveling to Wayne County at the invitation of the UAW president, remember UAW, this is United Auto Workers, is the group of workers who are on strike. The UAW president, Sean Fain, Biden is positioning himself squarely on the side of striking workers. So here, if Biden is positioning himself on the side of striking workers, it means that Biden is siding with the workers. He's taking their side. He's supporting them. Now, notice this, positioning himself squarely on the side of striking workers. Squarely is an adverb, and it means directly and firmly. So he's positioning himself firmly on the side of striking workers. It just makes it sound stronger. That's why they used it. So here the expression is to position oneself on the side of and then another party. Here are two alternative ways you could say it. Biden is siding with. So the verb is side to side with someone or Biden is supporting. Now you support someone. Biden is supporting the workers. Those are two alternatives you could use here. After the White House spent weeks quietly seeing whether it could play a more neutral role in mediating the dispute between labor and management. Okay, let's look at mediating, to mediate. The verb here is to mediate, and that's when you help solve a conflict, and you do that by communicating with the parties involved and help those parties reach a solution. Now, the person who does that is called a mediator. So a mediator, that's the noun form, and then to mediate, that's the verb form. So previously, the White House spent weeks quietly seeing whether it could play a more neutral role. So it sounds like the White House, which includes the president, Joe Biden, was going to take a more neutral role. But now Biden has not taken a neutral role because he has positioned himself squarely on the side of striking workers. So now Biden could not act as the mediator because he has taken a side, and a mediator would have to be neutral. Mediate the dispute, this is just another word for conflict, between labor and management. Let's continue. Biden's appearance also reflects the political reality of the moment. As he runs for a second term, so second term as president, he needs to win Rust Belt states like Michigan and can ill afford to alienate workers and their families by aligning himself with well-paid corporate executives. Okay, so he needs to win certain states like Michigan. To be honest, I'm not sure what a Rust Belt is. Obviously, it's describing the state in a specific way, but we can just ignore that. He needs to win states like Michigan and can ill afford to. This is another way of simply saying he can't afford to. He can't afford to. He can't afford to alienate workers. If you alienate someone, it means that you make them feel like they aren't part of you or you don't relate to them in any way. You make them feel very different. And obviously, if they feel that way, they're not going to vote for him as president. So he can't afford to alienate workers and their families. And how would he alienate these workers, make them feel like they're different or make them feel like they're not understood. Well, he could alienate them if he aligned himself with well-paid corporate executives. Now, he would align himself with the executives if he sided with the executives, if he supported the executives. Who are the executives? Well, in this case, it's the auto workers. These are the workers that Biden wants to side with to support. 
And the executives are the, the CEOs and the executive members at these auto companies, GM, Ford, and Chrysler. So he doesn't want to align himself with the CEO of GM, Ford, and Chrysler. He wants to align himself with the workers and their families. He doesn't want to alienate these workers to make the workers feel like, well, they don't belong with the president. They don't, the president doesn't understand their needs. I wrote those notes for you. Now let's continue. Biden's likely opponent in the 2024 general election seems to have made a similar calculation. So the calculation, we'll just think as a math calculation, but in this case, it's a political calculation. It's when you decide how you're going to behave, what you're going to do in order to maximize your potential of winning. And he calculated that he can get the most votes by siding with the workers and their families rather than with the corporate executives. So that's how he calculated that. So that's the calculation. Donald Trump is due to address UAW workers in Michigan on Wednesday. So Biden is supporting the workers on the picket line and Biden's opponent in 2024 will likely be former president Donald Trump and Donald Trump will also be supporting those workers. Well, at least he's due to address the workers. So at this point, he hasn't formally supported them, but he's going to address them, which means he's going to speak directly to them. And most likely he will say something positive. But that hasn't happened yet. So that is just my speculation at this point. Presidents often like to preserve space for themselves in such standoffs. A standoff is when you have one group here, one group or even one person, and then one group or one person here, and they can't reach an agreement. So they're, they're unable to come together. And that's why it's a standoff because one hits here, one is here, and they won't come together. So that's a standoff. Here's a more everyday example. My wife and I are at a standoff. Notice here the expression is to be at a standoff. My wife and I are at a standoff. I want to accept the promotion in Germany but she wants to stay in France. So here's the man's position and this is the woman's position and they're not willing to compromise. They're not willing to change their position. So they're just staying in their positions. They're at a standoff and you can describe this entire thing as the standoff. So this standoff here, Presidents often like to preserve space for themselves in such standoffs so that both sides will consider them a fair broker. This is a very complicated way of simply saying presidents often like to remain neutral. To preserve space for themselves, it just means they don't generally take sides. They like to remain neutral so they can act more as a mediator, a mediator. Remember, we learned that before, a mediator, someone who solves the conflict by bringing the parties together and by helping them communicate. So this is what presidents generally do, but that's not what President Joe Biden did. Biden also worried about intervening too directly in a strike whose economic cost has already exceeded $1.6 billion. So this is this strike has only been on for 11 days, I believe was in the article, 11 days. And the economic cost has already exceeded $1.6 billion. So obviously it's in the president's interest to resolve the conflict. And that's generally why they like to remain neutral. Now here, when you intervene in something, 
It means you involve yourself in something. So here's the verb to intervene, again, to intentionally become involved. Intentionally means you say, I want to become involved. You decide to intentionally become involved in a difficult situation. And you do that because you want to improve it or prevent it from getting worse. Now, you can use this again in a more everyday context. For example, the kids have been fighting all day. We should probably intervene. So you could say this to your husband or wife. We should probably intervene. We should probably involve ourselves in this difficult situation so we can improve it or at least prevent it from getting worse. So you can intervene in specific conflicts. And remember, you intentionally do that. Biden also worried about intervening too directly in a strike. So here, notice this is the noun form. You know it's a noun because there's an article here. In a strike whose economic cost has already exceeded $1.6 billion. Now, obviously, this was in the past. He worried about it. But this didn't prevent him because he did intervene and he sided with the auto workers and he did that because he didn't want to alienate them and he calculated that he needs their vote and their family's vote as well to run in the next presidential election. So that's the end of our article. What I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish, and this time you can focus on my pronunciation. Biden makes history by joining striking auto workers on the picket line. President Joe Biden made history today when he visited a picket line in Michigan in a show of loyalty to auto workers who are striking for higher wages and cost of living increases. Biden is looking to polish his pro-labor persona as he becomes the first sitting president to appear on a picket line. The United Auto Workers strike against the big three auto companies, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler maker Stellantis, has entered its 11th day. In traveling to Wayne County, at the invitation of the UAW president, Sean Fain, Biden is positioning himself squarely on the side of striking workers after the White House spent weeks quietly seeing whether it could play a more neutral role in mediating the dispute between labor and management. Biden's appearance also reflects the political reality of the moment. As he runs for a second term, he needs to win Rust Belt states like Michigan and can ill afford to alienate workers and their families by aligning himself with well-paid corporate executives. Biden's likely opponent in the 2024 general election seems to have made a similar calculation. Donald Trump is due to address UAW workers in Michigan on Wednesday. Presidents often like to preserve space for themselves in such standoffs so that both sides will consider them a fair broker. Biden also worried about intervening too directly in a strike whose economic cost has already exceeded $1.6 billion. Did you enjoy this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If so, put yes, yes, yes in the comments below. Put yes, 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 and I know you want more lessons. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And I recommend you watch this lesson right now. I know you'll love it.